This is the new EG4 6000EX and today we're going to talk about why someone would actually need one of these and how it differs from other models for around the same price. So first off this is an all-in-one system so it has an inverter, a solar charge controller, an AC charger, and a transfer switch all in one box. And the AC output capacity is 6000 watts and it has a split phase output with 120 and 240 volts. Next, the inverter circuit design is low frequency, which means there is a massive transformer on the top of this unit, which means it's very heavy. This thing is 78 pounds. The EG4 6500EX is a high frequency inverter design, and that thing is only 40 pounds. So we're talking double the weight for less output capacity. But this model has a massive surge capacity. So if you're trying to run large inductive loads, such as well pumps, um, large air compressors, one of these by itself can run a five horsepower, 240 volt air compressor without any other things connected to it, which is absolutely nuts. Next, the MPPT solar charge controller can handle 7,500 watts at 500 volts open circuit. So the max working voltage is 450. Volts. Next, the AC battery charger can output 120 amps at 48 volts, which is 5,760 watts. So you can charge a full server rack battery in an hour with one of these units. So now that you know all the basic features, what does it remind you of? This is an LVX 6048 by MPP Solar, but EG4 made their own and they also added some new features. So first off, they increased the PV input capacity before it was 6,000, now it's 7,500, and they increased the input voltage. Also, the battery terminals are larger and you can now put conduit on the bottom. And in my LVX review video, we actually covered those and I complained about that, so I'm glad they actually fixed it in this model. Next, they have new firmware coming out for this model with more features, but I'm not sure what those are. Also, you have communication protocols with EG4, so if you have their batteries, this will work with it. And that's pretty much it. That's the only differences. So it's a slightly upgraded LVX. Now let's actually open it up. different design you only have a single communication cable so the internals from what I can tell are identical to the LVX now something to mention about this unit in particular and the LVX is they both use this pretty cheaply made transformer it's split phase so center tap but the problem is is it's not toroidal Victron only uses toroidal because the efficiency is higher. We could discuss why for 20 minutes, but just understand that the efficiency from the input to the output is not going to be as good as a Victron inverter. Let's see what the manual says. I'm seeing 93 to 95% efficiency. That's actually not that bad. I'm surprised they're actually pulling that number. That's pretty good. Now, the biggest improvements, in my opinion, are these battery terminals, which on the previous one, they were super small, and these holes on the bottom, which can actually fit conduit. For some reason, on the LVX, these were oval-shaped, so you couldn't put conduit. It didn't fit any standard size connector. 135 watts so on the LVX the biggest downside was the idle consumption was 135 watts so we're gonna hook up a battery and see if this differs at all so now we have a 48 volt battery connected this one needs the screen to be connected to turn it on I always forget how loud these things are god dang don't do this at home this is high voltage it can all kill you Let's zero it out just to make sure it's right. 2.6 amps, 52.64 volts, 136 watts, so practically the same as the LVX. I wish they could find a way to lower that. I know Victron has some really cool software that does it. I wish they could just upload it into here somehow. Now let's talk about who actually needs this model. This is very particular for inductive loads. If you have a massive well pump that trips up your other inverters, this will actually run it. And if you have a massive motor that nothing else can run, you could put two of these or three of these into parallel and run any electric motor that you wish. But because of the idle consumption being so high, most people will leave this turned off for most of the day. Because if you were to run this 24 seven, 
This would use 3.2 kilowatt hours a day just for idle consumption alone. Now let's say your large inductive loads don't need to be run 24 seven. Let's say you wanna run an air compressor for a few hours a day and you don't wanna spend all of that money on a Victron that has a lower idle consumption and higher efficiency, but it costs three times as much as this. Instead, you can run your large loads with this because it's super cheap and it does work. It is a high quality inverter. It's just that idle consumption is very tough to deal with and then have a small inverter like the Phoenix inverter that we just reviewed to run your small stuff like your router your LED lights and things like that now what I like about this inverter is it's easy to set up for 240 volt loads you simply connect it to the AC output terminals and that's it if I want 240 volts on my 6500 EX's I'm gonna have to put two of them in parallel on a single battery then set up the communication cables between them and then program them this one I just connect a battery and I find fire it up and I've got 240 volts. And a single unit should power most people's loads. If you have multiple well pumps or multiple EV chargers and massive solar panel arrays, then you're gonna have to put these in parallel. But for most off-grid situations, this should be able to run all of your large loads, no problem. Or you can just spend the money and buy a nice large Victron inverter. The idle consumption is very low, has a massive surge capacity, and they're nice. Those have a lot of features that this doesn't have. It just costs a lot more money, usually you know, three times as much. Also, those inverters do not have a solar charge controller built in, and this one can handle 7,500 watts. So for the price, it's hard to beat this. Now, another argument people bring up is even though the idle consumption is high, solar panels are cheap, and you can just buy a bunch of solar panels to offset that idle consumption. So 3,200 divided by five, that gives you 640 watts of solar panels to offset the production of this, which is a lot cheaper than buying those more expensive inverters. So you have lots of options depending on your budget and how much you wanna build. You might be limited on solar array size. What if your roof is too small to add the solar panels to offset this? If you have like a van or an RV, I would not recommend this. Now for most people, I recommend sticking with the 6500EX or any other LV6548 because they're more efficient, they have a lower idle consumption, they're easier to mount because they're half the weight, they're also quieter, and these can run any inductive load that you wish if you size them properly. Some people will complain that these will not run their well pump. Well, if you put more in parallel, they absolutely will. Or you could run your well pump with one of those and then have these for everything else. So yeah, lots of options. Also, you have more solar charge controllers. With this system in front of you, we have four solar arrays connected. If instead you had 6,000 EXs, you would only have two solar charge controllers. So yeah, I prefer this any day. So if you're not running an air compressor or a massive well pump, just stick with these. And even if you are, you can still use these instead. If you have the money, go for a Victron or some other fancy inverter. So there's a lot to say in this video, but I hope you understand the point that I was trying to make. I had to kind of cover everything so I could make that comparison. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.